Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the last video in my uh, uh, indirect method statement of cash flows lecture series. Uh, this one is going to be all about analyzing our, our statement of cash flows, right? What kind of um, insights can we gain about a company based on the statement of cash flows? Um, so let's check it out. All right, first up, cash flows and life cycles. This one actually doesn't involve any math. This is actually one of the more interesting things that you can do with a statement of cash flows. Um, the statement of cash flows can be used to evaluate, as I say here, the life cycle of a company or even a major product. Now, obviously as an investor, all you would see is the company's cash flows. So you would be able to evaluate the company. Um, inside the company as as management you could even break those cash flows down to say a product level and learn a little bit like uh, learn a little bit about a, a product um, but either way whether the company or the product what I'm about to show you um, it basically shows how how different cash flows associated with different things can tell you something about the stage of life um, that that thing is in so notice the way that my my graph down here is arranged um, on on the vertical axis I've got a section for cash inflows, cash outflows. You can consider this middle line kind of break even. You don't have more inflows or more outflows. You're kind of neutral on that. Um, and then down on the bottom, I have different phases of a typical company or product life cycle. The introduction phase, the growth phase, maturity phase, and then ultimately the decline phase if you don't um, continue to, to grow and mature accordingly. Um, let's start off for a minute and talk about, let's talk about business in kind of the order that things happen. Uh, you have to raise money, right? To run a business, one of the first things you have to do is, is, is raise money. And so um, I'm going to use my, my orange pen here, and I'm going to show you CFF. So I'm going to write over here CFF, cash flows from financing, in, in this kind of orangish yellow color. Um, when you first begin a business, um, introductory phase, you need to raise capital. And so your cash inflows are going to be quite high, right? You're going to be raising more money than than you are paying back. In fact, you're probably not paying back anything right away. Um, as you grow, you'll probably still need to raise money, um, but uh, you'll probably need to raise a little bit less of it than, than you necessarily did um, in the introductory phase. Um, some point between growth and maturity, you're going to end up kind of kind of neutralizing out. Maybe you're raising some funds, maybe you're paying back some funds, um, and you'll hit some neutral point. As you mature, you're more likely to then uh, uh, pay back your, your starting loans than you are to have a need for new loans. And the reason for that is because you've got other sources of money at that point. Your operations are doing well and bringing you their own money, right? Um, and so, so you tend to start paying back, so your outflows uh, uh, start to start to increase. And then, of course, um, as your business kind of goes into a, a, a decline, uh, you're not going to really take on new borrowings. Um, you're essentially going to pay back whatever outstanding debts you have. If you decline all the way to liquidation, whatever's left over just goes to those debt holders and, and you're essentially done. So this is kind of how CFF looks over, say, the, the life of a corporation. And, and this is very crude, right? There's, you know, don't be like, oh, well, right at that mark is when they cross the neutral line. No, I mean, it fluctuates. Okay, um, but this gives you a general general sense of the trends that happen. Um, all right, so you raise money. What do you do with that money? Well, before you can operate, you have to invest that money in things that will enable you to operate, like your uh, capital expenditures, your equipment, your buildings, so forth and so on. So I'm going to use my my blue pen, and I'm going to show you kind of what happens as far as investing activities go over the the, the life cycle. So CFI will be in blue. Remember, um, you're raising a bunch of money, right, when you start business, and then you're turning around and essentially spending that money um, on your things like your fixed assets. And so your cash outflows are gonna be extremely high when you first start. Um, from there, as you grow, you are gonna continue to expand and to uh, 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 basically spend cash to, to buy things like fixed assets. And so you're still going to be in the outflow territory. You just won't need as much, right? What you need when you first start is going to be a lot bigger than what you need through incremental um, uh, ex 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 expansions later. As you mature, you're essentially not going to uh, uh, 
continue to expand, right? Maturity is by definition, like you're, you're kind of your peak, right? You're, you're there, you've matured, you're no longer expanding, you just, this is your business and you are running it. And so um, at that point, you, you won't quite be expanding as much. And in fact, as um, say some of your fixed assets start to depreciate fully, you might start selling some stuff off, resulting in net cash inflows um, from your from your investing activities. And then of course, as you decline, and especially if you think about it all the way to a liquidation state, um, in liquidation, you sell everything off, right? So as your business declines and you start to advance sell-offs all the way toward liquidation, um, your your CFI activity becomes more and more positive because you're you just it's a fire sale, right? Everything goes out and you're getting the cash in exchange in exchange for those items. And now let's talk about CFO cash from operations. How do operation, operating cash flows appear on, on this chart? Well, um, when you first start business, chances are you are not making cash. Um, often businesses start by operating in, in quite a bit of a, a, a deficit. And so uh, you've probably got outflows going toward operations in addition to the outflows going toward your um, investments um, right out the gate. Now, as you grow, hopefully those cash flows become less negative, less negative, less negative. And then at some point, those cash flows from operations, if you're doing well, become positive, right? Positive, positive, positive. And in maturity, they're gonna peak somewhere. Um, you're, you're basically gonna maximize whatever your cash flows can possibly be. And then you're gonna start to decline. And by definition, declining is your operation is starting to take a downturn. And as your operations take a downturn, your cash in from operations take a downturn all the way until end of life when when essentially you you start losing money. I, you know, I put you to a start losing money. I really shouldn't do that. Let me back that up a minute. Um, essentially till you hit a point where you're neutral. And I say neutral because um, it, you probably won't keep running your business into the hole by taking operating cash flows negative again. By that point, you're already on the decline. You've realized you're on the decline. Once you hit uh, zero point, we can't generate any additional cash from this business, that's probably when you'll just call it quits and you'll liquidate. You probably won't take it back into the negative as, as you head toward, toward, toward declining. So this gives you just some sense of, of, of what cash flows can tell you about a life cycle. So um, you know you might be saying, well, well you just des described how the life cycle defines the cash flows, not the other way around. But think about when you're looking at an, uh, a statement of cash flows. Um, you could see a statement of cash flows that shows um, high financing inflows and high operating and investing outflows. And that would tell you, hey, that combination suggests we're in an introductory period, right? Or you could see um, that you're looking at, a, at a, a, a statement of cash flows that shows, uh, oh, last year, uh, financing activities were still inflows. This year, they've turned into um, outflows. And at the same time, we notice that investing and operating activities have gone from being outflows to inflows. That's when you know that you have kind of started to move from that late growth stage into early maturity stage. Um, and of course, if you see that cash inflows from selling things off um, is getting really high while your operating cash flows are starting to lack and you're starting to just kind of have to pay back whatever you can to your investors, that's kind of your indication that, that we're heading to, to a decline. So you can, you can see where any of these things stand and it tells you something about life cycle. Like I said, at an investor level about the company, within a company, managers could do this even at a product level and, and get a sense of how a product is doing. Where in that product's life cycle are you? Should you just do away with a product and move on to the next thing? So forth and so on. So this, this I find very interesting. All right, we also have one calculation that we can do with the statement of cash flows. There's others. I, I don't mean to say this is the only one period, but it's the only one we cover in an introductory uh, level class. And that is what's called free cash flows. And, and all free cash flows is, and I guess let me explain it in terms of the equation because that actually describes what it is, is you take um, net CFO, so your net cash provided by your operating activities, subtract your capital expenditures, your purchases of your fixed assets, um, and subtract any cash dividends you returned to the shareholders. So essentially it's saying, what cash did you generate from operations in excess of what you had to reinvest in the company 
as well as return to the shareholders. So, so you can think of it that way. Um, reinvest in company and then cash dividends return to shareholders. So after your reinvestments, after you're returning to shareholders, what cash did you generate to then essentially use freely in your operating of your business and you're going forward? Um, and so that's what's called free cash flows. So here we have an example. This is um, Yum Brands uh, 2019 10K that I have over here for you. And um, I did I did cut off the statement of cash flows just for size purposes. But notice I, I kept um, the bottom of the CFO section up top. So net cash provided by operating activities was thirteen fifteen. I'm just going to do the 2019 here. Um, and then I'll go ahead and label that net CFO. Um, and then we want to know how much cash uh, did they spend on capital expenditures? Well. Some companies' statement of cash flows are nicer in identifying this than others. Yum Brands is one that's nice in identifying this because if you look under investing activities, because remember, this is essentially fixed asset expenditures. If you look under investing activities, the first line says capital spending. And that capital spending is, in fact, their capital expenditures. Some statement of cash flows may say um, uh, purchases of fixed assets or purchases of PP and E, right? But same thing, capital expenditures, just worded differently. And so I'm going to go minus, uh, that was 196, cap X, capital expenditures. Oh, you'll hear that phrase a lot, cap X, cap X. That's what we mean, capital expenditures. And then dividends. Remember, dividends are transactions with the shareholders. So if there was any cash paid out to shareholders, that should be in the CFF section. So I go down to the CFF section and I see dividends paid on common stock for, trying to go across, 511. So minus 511, um, cash div. How do I know it's a cash div and not say like a stock div? Well, it's on the statement of cash flows. It has to be cash. Um, and so now I just have to do the math on that. 1315 minus 196 minus 511 gives me a grand total of 608. And that is what we call our free cash flows or our FCF. In other words, that's the amount of free cash the company has to play with after reinvesting in the business, after giving something back to the shareholders. Um, and, and of course, uh, free cash flow, is that good? Is that bad? Well, you do want some cash to play around with but you don't want too much. So there's no general rule of thumb here on what's too high, what's too low. This is just kind of telling you, does the company have room to play or does the company not have room to play? Nothing more. All right, that is it for the indirect method statement of cash flows. So uh, just remember, most of this lecture series was focused on one section, CFO. Um, and so if you need some, some, some kind of refresher on say the other section, CFI, CFF, check out my lecture series on the direct method statement of cash flows because I, I talk about it in detail there. Um, but indirect method is the most common. You should get familiar with it. Make sure you kind of study the, the, the rubric that I've provided you with because that rubric is your key to solving the CFO um, uh, section of the statement of cash flows, the indirect statement of cash flows. Um, remember about life cycles and that you can kind of do this analysis with cash flows to see how, you know, what stage of business a company is in. And other than that, um, I hope you found it interesting. Uh, um, uh, I hope you join me for my next lecture series. I will have some practice problems on this for you. And otherwise, have a great day.